Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Thank you guys so much for the overwhelmingly positive and supportive feedback about my apartment tour video, which was the last video on my channel. If you haven't seen it yet, I will link it up here so you can watch. Everyone was so kind about that video and I also got a lot of questions about the apartment from that video, especially from Reddit because I posted some photos of my place on the Cozy Places subreddit and then I shared the video in the comments and a lot of people had a lot of questions about my design style and where I found things so I just wanted to do a quick Q&A to answer the most popular questions I've gotten about my apartment and if you guys have any other questions let me know in the comments and I will answer those as well so the first question I got was is this in NYC no my apartment is in Philadelphia Pennsylvania in the Rittenhouse Square area I'm very flattered that people thought it was New York though because I don't even want to know what the size of an apartment would cost in New York certainly out of my price range but yes my apartment is in Philadelphia the next question I got was what inspired your design style and I love this question but at the same time it's kind of hard to answer because the answer is really like so many different things I think one of the biggest things is that my father collects antiques he mostly collects antique books but because of that I grew up with him going to a lot of like flea markets and antique stores and really learning to appreciate things that have been around for a long time rather than buying things new and of course there's also an aesthetic that comes with more like vintage and antique pieces so I think that growing up with my dad taking me to stuff like that has really developed my appreciation appreciation and desire to make my house look more antique or more vintage. So that's definitely a huge thing that has kind of carried throughout my life. But also in the last few years, I've really been drawn to this style that's kind of like a little bit French inspired, definitely very antique inspired, adding details like statues or my chandelier, like things that are like a little bit more elevated than what you would normally find. And it has taken a long time for me to like accumulate all of these things and like acquire things slowly over time. And that's a really, really big thing I wanna emphasize for people watching this video is that we'll get to this also in a bit, but like a lot of the questions are focused on like, where did you get this? Where did you get that? Where is this from? What's the link to this? And and my answer is usually I bought it secondhand. And so my advice to you is that if you like my style and it's something you want to emulate, my advice would be don't just buy what I buy. Try to think the way I think. Try to look for things in the way that I look for things because I don't want you to go out and buy the same couch that I have and the same bookshelf that I have and the same dining table that I have. Like I would rather you go out and think about things in a way of like, what can I get that's secondhand? What can I get that fits my style? How can I acquire things slowly and put them together in a really thoughtful way rather than just like clicking a bunch of links and buying a bunch of stuff and being exactly the same as somebody else. One thing I do is keep a list in my phone of everything I'm looking for, whether that's decor pieces, I'll say, oh, I'm looking for like a small statue or I'm looking for a painting that's about this size or I'm looking for a table and here's the maximum dimensions that it can be. I'll keep a list like that in my phone so that when I'm antiquing or thrifting, I can review it before I start and then keep an eye out for those things while I'm shopping. And I try to do this very intentionally where I don't just like buy random stuff because I see it on the spot. I try really hard to intentionally figure out what I need ahead of time and then wait until I find the perfect thing and don't just settle with the first thing I find. That reminds me of another kind of cute memory with my dad is that when we would go to these flea markets and stuff when I was a little kid, he would give us like $10 or $20 or something and he would say, this is all I'm giving you for the whole day. You can spend it on whatever you want, but just remember, don't buy the first thing that you see because then you might see something later and you won't have any money left. So. He was trying to do that to teach us how to manage money, but for me also, it taught me to like wait until the perfect thing comes along that you feel really sure about for your home rather than just buying the first thing you see that will work and then it ends up not really fitting well with everything else you have. Another question I got was, what is the paint color in the apartment? Unfortunately, I have no idea. This is a rental, so I don't know what paint they're using in here. It is definitely an off-white color, a little bit yellowy tone, like a cream tone. I know there's like a million different white paints out there, so I don't know what mine is, but I do like it. I think it's very warm and very pleasant. 
moment. This next question I have been getting a lot and it is, was the chandelier here when you moved in? And the answer is no, the chandelier is mine. I bought it in Philadelphia at a store called Classic Antiques Philly. I had actually seen the chandelier like six months before I bought it and I loved it, but I didn't go for it at that time. And then like six months later, I was back at that store and I was like, oh, there's no way they're still gonna have that chandelier. And they did. And the owner gave me a better price on it. So I had to get it. And I'm so glad that I did because it's definitely the most extra thing I've ever bought for my house, but it's one of my absolute favorite things I've ever bought for my house. Okay, now we can get into kind of the long list of where did you get this? Where did you get that questions? So the first one was where did you get the chandelier? As I said, I bought it at an antique store in Philadelphia. Somebody also asked about my coffee table. Actually, the coffee coffee table was a big hit. I got a lot of comments of people saying that they love the coffee table. Girl, me too. It's one of my other favorite things that I've ever found. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. It was $150, which I thought was a great price. It's a bone inlay coffee table. And I've searched for it online to try to figure out where it's originally from. And I believe it's from Anthropology. They have a collection that's very similar looking to this. I don't know if it's exactly the same. So it's either from Anthropology or probably from somebody trying to make a dupe of Anthropology. I think originally it would have been somewhere in the neighborhood of like $800 to $1,200 and I got it for $150. So I feel like that was a fantastic deal. People have also asked me about the couch and whether the couch is from Article. It is not. I also got it on Facebook Marketplace and the couch I actually got for free because somebody in my area was moving and they just didn't want to deal with it. So they gave it away for free. All I paid was like about $40 to rent a U-Haul truck to go pick it up. And as far as it being from Article, I don't think so. I've never had an Article couch or any furniture from Article. Article, so I'm not sure exactly what the quality is like, but I assume their quality is a little bit better than this couch. I think this couch looks really nice, but in terms of like the construction of it, it's definitely not the nicest couch ever made. The fact that it was free makes me not really care so much about that. Like eventually I'll probably like to upgrade to something that's a little bit better quality, a little bit more comfortable. Not to say that it's uncomfortable, but you know what I mean? I think that I could just eventually invest in something that's a little nicer, but for now having a couch that's free and is exactly the style that I was looking for is kind of unbeatable. People have also asked about this bookshelf that's sitting here behind me and where is that from? Once again, it's from Facebook Marketplace. I have tried to look up where it's originally from and I couldn't quite figure it out. One tip that I'll give you though, is that if you see something like in a thrift store or or on Facebook Marketplace, or you wanna know where something originally came from, whatever it is, clothing, furniture, anything, take a photo of it and search for it on Google Lens. Google Lens is like, kind of like a reverse image search where it'll search for images that are similar to whatever you give it. So if you take a photo of this bookshelf, for example, you can put it into Google Lens and it can search for you visually similar items and it'll either find the exact item or it'll find something similar. I've done that a lot with like clothing and shoes and stuff because I used to sell a lot of stuff on Poshmark and so I would look up like where stuff was originally from or I would try to find like the original photos of the model wearing it or something and Google Lens is a really great tool for stuff like that. I've also gotten a lot of questions about this tapestry behind me and where's the tapestry from. This one is kind of a fun little story. So I found this tapestry in an antique store in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And it was one of those things where as soon as I saw it, I knew that if I didn't buy it, I would regret it. And it was a little bit awkward because like I was traveling for work in another city. I was there for six weeks for a work project. And I was like, it's kind of inconvenient to buy this pretty large, tapestry and it had a pole and I was like, how am I gonna get this home? How am I gonna fly with this? So I ended up buying it with a rod and then I had to get rid of the rod because I couldn't fit it into my suitcase, but I just folded up the tapestry and brought it home with me. And then when I was researching it, I learned that this is a vintage reproduction. So I think the one that I have was made in the 1950s, but it's a reproduction of a tapestry that was made in the 1500s. And the original is actually a set of six or seven different tapestries called The Lady and the Unicorn and they're in a museum in Paris. I'm going to Paris in October, so I'm really gonna try to go see them in real life because I think it would be so cool to see the original version of something that I have in my house. That's one of my favorite things in my house. But yes, the tapestry is also secondhand. If you search the Lady and the Unicorn tapestry on Google, I have seen this pop up on Cherish and First Dibs and websites like that. So if you wanna buy your own secondhand, that is where I would look. I did get a good deal on mine because the ones I've seen on Cherish and whatnot are usually around like three or four hundred dollars mine I only paid 150 
So if you poke around, I think you can find it online. I just don't know what the prices are gonna be like. People have also asked about my artwork collection, mainly in my gallery wall. They've asked where did I get all the artwork? One of the specific questions was about the champagne sign. So the champagne sign I bought, I wanna say in Connecticut. I was on a work trip in Connecticut and I popped into an antique store in some of my free time and I found that. I don't remember what store it was, but it was an antique mall in Connecticut. And then all of the other artwork is really a big mixture. Like some of it is from thrift stores, some of it is from antique stores. Some of it is things that friends have given me or friends have painted for me. So it's really from all over. I also got a question about how do I plan out a gallery wall and what are the steps for making it look like this? Somebody also asked about like, do you just start with something and then as you acquire pieces, you add them onto the gallery wall or do you start out having everything? For me, for this gallery wall at least, I started out with everything. So I laid all of my artwork out on the floor to just see everything that I had and I kind of organized it into sections based on color so like everything that was in a gold frame versus a black frame versus brown versus whatever so I laid it out to try to see like what colors I had and like what would look nice together and then I kind of pared that down to figure out what would fit in the space that I had and I actually have a lot of other artwork that is not up on my walls yet because I'm not sure where I want to put it but yeah basically I just laid everything out on the floor in front of the wall to figure out what would fit and what would look nice next to each other I did some rearranging I actually have a short video where I show how I made this gallery wall, so I will link that down below if you guys wanna check that out. But basically, yes, the artwork is from all over and I had all of it before I made the gallery wall and I really recommend if you can acquire pieces before you start putting them up, I think it helps a lot with your decision-making of where to place things so that it looks balanced and it looks very even. Somebody also asked a specific question about this piece of art in particular and actually over the years in like several different videos, people have mentioned this photo which is crazy like some people identified it right away they were like oh my god i knew exactly what that was so i have this print from my friend olivia reed i will link her print shop down below she does amazing amazing work but back when she launched her print shop she needed people to kind of test it out to make sure the customer service and the quality and everything was good so she invited a few of us to order something from her website for free just to see how the experience was like so i ordered this print from her it's a photo of i hope i say this right pajama castle in Slovenia. She did a trip to Slovenia and she took all these beautiful photos of these old buildings and I just love this. I thought it was really beautiful. The frame I got at Goodwill for like $3 and the frame is perfect because it's kind of green and gold. And I love this print. People ask me about it all the time on the internet, which is so funny because I've had people from Slovenia be like, oh my God, that's in my country. And I'm like, how did you spot that out of this whole entire video, this like little detail? But I really love that. I love Olivia's work. Like I said, I'll link her down below. And the last question I'm gonna cover in this video is some variation of, can you come do my house next? Um, I would love to. So I've actually pitched this idea with a couple of my friends of like, starting a series where I would basically help them redesign their space. So my idea is that I would come over, we would talk about what's working in their space, what's not working, what do they wanna change, what do they wanna upgrade, what's their budget for doing this, and then I would kind of help them design the space, go thrifting, go shopping with them to figure out what we wanna buy, keep it within the budget, keep it reasonably priced, and then help them implement and decorate everything. I'm super interested in doing that. Almost kind of similar to like the Sorry Girls or a channel like that. So I have mentioned that to a couple of my friends. I have a few people who are interested in doing it. So I am very excited to start working on videos like that. Definitely subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss those videos. But it seems like in the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna start working on some something like that. As far as like for general people, can you come do my house next? Like I wish that I could. I wish that I knew more about design and that I could actually work with real people. Maybe I will get to that point eventually, but for now it's kind of just my hobby and something I'm doing with my friends. But thank you very much. That's very flattering for me to hear that people like my style and they want me to help them with their style. So those are all the questions I have for this video. Again, thank you guys so much for all the love that you shared about my apartment tour. If you haven't seen it, it'll be linked down below. I also have a lot of other apartment related content, apartment hunting, my empty apartment tour, things I've thrifted for this apartment. So definitely check out the links below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.